What's up, all you Quantum Maniacs? I'm Daquan Young, and today we rank every team's number one running back from worst to first for 2019. Don't forget to subscribe to TPS and make sure you hit the bell and turn on our notifications and join the notification squad. And don't forget to leave your video ideas down in the comment section below. We're looking, and we'll give you a shout out in the video if we use it. And a big shout out to Lord Stone for suggesting this video. Now, the running back position in the NFL isn't as valuable these days. There are only a handful of 1,000 yard rushers every year, and you rarely see running backs win the MVP award anymore. Such is life with an NFL in a more pass happy era. But all 32 teams have at least one halfback that they'll be leaning on a plenty in 2019. No matter how good or bad your ground game is, every team has to try and balance out the offense. So how do the starting running backs stack up against each other? Well, that's what we're here to decide. And before we get started, let us emphasize that our rankings are based on a combination of how the running backs played in 2017 and 18 and how we expect them to perform in 2019. Number 32, David Montgomery. Tariq Cohen can split out and play a little bit more receiver, so we cheated and we decided to give the nod to Montgomery here. The Chicago Bears traded Jordan Howard and drafted Montgomery in the third round. And we're sure offensive guru and head coach Matt Nagy will turn Montgomery into a stud, but we need to see it first. We can't put Montgomery ahead of all the other top running backs yet. But you know, there's a high chance he makes us look silly after a few games. So go out there and show us what you got, Mr. Montgomery. Number 31, Kenyon Drake. The Miami Dolphins lead back has made his fair share of flashy highlight reel plays, such as the miracle in Miami against the New England Patriots. Drake is the undisputed number one back following Frank Gore's departure, but can new head coach Brian Flores make the most of his talents behind such a terrible O-line? Drake's 644 rushing yards in 2017 remain the best of his young career so far. We'll need to see more before moving him up higher, but he certainly has the ability to be a 1,000 yard rusher. Number 30, Peyton Barber. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers had a fairly lackluster rushing game in 2018, but you know head coach Bruce Arians will look to change that right away. Barber had 871 rushing yards and five touchdowns, but he only averaged 3.7 yards per carry. Barber and Ronald Jones will battle it out for number one reps, but for now, the former gets the nod here. If he holds down the starting job, Barber could be a top 10 running back by season's end. And you know Arians will try to make it work after turning David Johnson into a major star in Arizona. Number 29, Tevin Coleman. Coleman was the ideal number two back for the Atlanta Falcons, but he signed with the San Francisco 49ers in hopes of becoming the main guy. Coleman should be considered the favorite to win the leading gig over Matt Breida and veteran Jarek McKinnon. Coleman reunites with head coach Kyle Shanahan, who served as offensive coordinator in Atlanta, and he does plenty of damage as a pass catcher as well, but he should be considered a 1,000 yard threat now. Coleman did have a career best 800 yards for Atlanta last season. Now we just see if he can hold down the fort over McKinnon and Breeze. Number 28, LaShawn McCoy. The perennial pro bowler set career yards and rushing yards with 514 and yards per carry with 3.2. McCoy also averaged a disappointing 36.7 yards per game in 2018, so it's safe to say that he's already on the decline. The Buffalo Bills seem to think so too. They signed the ageless Frank Gore and drafted FAU product Devin Singletary in the third round. So for now, Shady McCoy will stay on as the lead back in Buffalo, but it wouldn't be a surprise if he eventually lost his starting gig. Still, he's accomplished too much for us to put him lower on this list. Number 27, Mark Ingram Jr. Expect the Baltimore Ravens to roll with the running back by committee approach once again. Gus Edwards had a nice 2018 campaign, but the Ravens decided to beef up more by signing New Orleans Saints standout Mark Ingram Jr. Ingram should be a nice fit in this rush first offense, but don't expect him to absolutely light it up for your fantasy team. Edwards and Lamar Jackson will get their fair share of carries as well. Number 26, Josh Jacobs. The Oakland Raiders used one of their three first rounders on the Alabama running back. Jacobs' rookie year could go really well or really bad. The Oakland O-line is quite terrible, and it remains to be seen if newcomer Trent Brown will be able to fix it. Jacobs is at least an upgrade over Marshawn Lynch. He has a nice skill set and an excellent burst of speed. It just comes down to whether or not the Raiders' O-line can provide him with the running lanes. Take your guess. That's why we said he could have a great rookie season or a really disappointing one. Number 25, Adrian Peterson. He's a lock for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And AP showed he's not done yet after rushing for 1,042 yards and seven touchdowns at age 33. However, it's reasonable to believe that AP will regress in 2019. The Redskins don't have any game-changing pass catchers, so defenses will happily stack the box against Peterson. 
Plus, you know, it's hard for running backs to sustain 1,000 yard seasons in their mid 30s. Then again, we thought Peterson was finished last year, so who are we to doubt his ability to have another big year? Number 24, David Johnson. The Arizona Cardinals running back hasn't been able to repeat that monster 2016 season. Of course, he was injured for all but one game in 2017, and his campaign in 2018 wasn't too shabby. 940 rushing yards, 7 rushing touchdowns, and 50 receptions for 446 yards. But it's natural to be worried about if Johnson can stay healthy. Also, how big of a role will he play under new head coach Cliff Kingsbury? The offense is now built around rookie and first overall pick Kyler Murray. Now, Johnson could either reemerge as a serious weapon, or he could be a big disappointment in 2019. This forces us to place him in the bottom third of the barrel here. Number 23, Leonard Fournette. It's concerning that Fournette has been limited to 21 games through his first two NFL seasons. Hamstring problems limited Fournette to just eight games for the Jaguars last year. Team president Tom Coughlin also called him out for poor behavior on the sidelines, so that's not fun. He's only averaged 3.7 yards per carry over his first two seasons. Can the fourth overall pick from 2017 finally break out? Having Nick Foles run the offense should help Fournette, since defenses won't be focusing on him as much. Number 22, Philip Lindsay. The undrafted rookie was a nice story in 2018, rushing for 1,037 yards and nine touchdowns on the lowly Denver Broncos team. But we expect some regression from Lindsay here for two reasons. Number one, Royce Freeman will be pushing him hard for the lead running back spot. And number two, the Broncos will look to transition to a more pass-happy offense with Joe Flacco and Drew Locke now in the fold. Lindsey might lose the starting gig, or he and Freeman may share the duties. Those question marks give us no choice but to move Lindsey down here, despite finishing ninth in rushing last season. Number 21, Aaron Jones. The Green Bay Packers running back showed some flashes in 2018, rushing for 728 yards and eight touchdowns while averaging 5.5 yards per carry. But of course, Jamal Williams got every opportunity to take over as the lead back as well. New head coach Matt LaFleur will look to bring more balance to the offense rather than rely solely on the arm of Aaron Rodgers. And it opens the door for Jones to emerge as a top tier running back. But we must see it before moving him up. Number 20, Devontae Freeman. Yes, he only played two games last season due to injuries, but let's not forget how much of a difference maker he is in Atlanta. He surpassed the 1,000 yard mark in both 2015 and 16, rushing for a total of 22 touchdowns over that span. And he also had 865 yards and seven touchdowns in 2017. We'll have to see how Freeman will perform after a lost season, but you shouldn't bet against him, given his consistency from 2015 to 17. Of course, injury concerns forced us to put him lower on this list, but he could totally find himself in the top 10 by season's end. Number 19, Damian Williams. The Kansas City Chiefs released Kareem Hunt following the release of a video where he kicked a woman at a Cleveland hotel. They then turned to former Miami Dolphin Damian Williams, who fit in beautifully for the Patrick Mahomes-led offense. In just three games, Williams compiled 256 rushing yards and six total touchdowns. He had three touchdowns against the Patriots in the AFC Championship game as well. Short sample size, maybe, but the Chiefs have always had great production from their running backs under Andy Reid. Jamal Charles, Spencer Ware, Sharkandrick West, and now Williams. Expect a big season from the latter. I mean, how can you not produce when Patrick Mahomes is your quarterback? Number 18, Carryon Johnson. Matt Patricia's first year in Detroit didn't go so well, but at least he was able to build a half-decent rushing game. Rookie Carryon Johnson was limited to 10 games, but he had a respectable 641 rushing yards and averaged 5 point yards per carry. Quarterback Matthew Stafford had a bad back injury in 2018, so that means the Lions have to cut back on his workload while leaning more on the rushing game. Plus, you know, Johnson has a nice skill set and the ability to be a 1,000-yard rusher, so it wouldn't be a surprise if he emerged as Stafford's best playmaker for 2019. Number 17, Lamar Miller. It's kind of a miracle that Miller finished with 973 yards and five rushing touchdowns in 2018, given the horrible Houston Texans O-line he had to play behind. You know, the unit that allowed Deshaun Watson to get sacked 62 times. Now, Miller has rushed for over 800 yards in five straight seasons now, and the Texans will keep on feeding him the ball, and why not? Miller had 4.6 yards per carry last season, and if the offensive line can perform better, he could finish among the top five or 10 in rushing. Number 16, Marlon Mack. Mack broke out in his sophomore year with 900 in yards and nine touchdowns, and that's quite impressive given how the Indianapolis Colts offense is built entirely around Andrew Luck and the passing game. But don't be surprised if the Colts give Mack a bigger workload. The Colts simply need to balance out their offense if they want to compete for a Super Bowl. 
so Mac should be able to produce even more in his third NFL season. Number 15, Dalvin Cook. Injuries have limited Dalvin Cook to 15 games through his first two NFL seasons. If he can stay healthy in 2019, he may finally break out for the Minnesota Vikings. They certainly need it because Kirk Cousins isn't capable of running the offense without a strong ground game. Cook is explosive in space and has the tools to be one of the NFL's top tier running backs. Again, it all comes down to health. If he plays all 16 games, Cook might be in contention for the rushing title. Number 14, Nick Chubb. Even though Chubb performed nicely for the Cleveland Browns in his rookie year, the front office decided to pick up Kareem Hunt to complement the Georgia product. Now this is still Chubb's starting job to lose, however. He had 996 rushing yards and eight touchdowns last season. We expect a big sophomore year for Chubb, especially with Freddie Kitchens taking over now as head coach. Number 13, Sonny Michel. Tom Brady wasn't always at his best in 2018, and he struggled at times in the playoffs. Thankfully, the New England Patriots had rookie running back Sonny Michel, who rushed for 931 yards and six touchdowns. The explosive and crafty Michel added 336 rushing yards and a whopping six touchdowns in three playoff games, leading the Patriots to a Super Bowl 53 victory. We all know that Bill Belichick hates your fantasy team and uses multiple running backs, but Michelle is unquestionably the lead back for this team heading into the 2019 season. A thousand rushing yards should come easily for Michelle in his sophomore year. Number 12, Jordan Howard. You might think we have Howard too high on this list, but we think he'll be a home run addition to the Philadelphia Eagles explosive offense. When does this team not employ playmaking workhorse running backs? Howard was expendable in Chicago, but he's certainly going to shine in Philly. This is a guy with two 1,000 yard seasons on his resume. Plus he had a career best 935 rushing yards in 2018. He's clearly the number one back for Philly heading into the 2019 season. And it wouldn't be a surprise if they tried using him more in the pass catching department as well. Expect big numbers for Howard who will flourish in Doug Peterson's offense. Number 11, James Conner, Le'Veon Bell who? The Pittsburgh Steelers didn't need their Pro Bowl back who sat out the entire 2018 season. That opened the door for James Conner to break out with 973 yards and 12 touchdowns despite missing three games. That stacked Pittsburgh offensive line showed they can make any running back look good. Conner looked like another bell out there, maybe even better. He was a huge weapon in the passing game as well, notching 55 receptions for 497 yards. Number 10, Chris Carson. 2018 first rounder Rashad Penny wasn't able to produce much in his rookie year. But sophomore Chris Carson was able to step in and enjoy a wonderful breakout season. Carson finished fifth in league rushing with 1,151 yards, and he had nine touchdowns. There's no reason to believe he'll regress, although Penny will likely get more reps since, you know, Seattle used the first rounder on him. But expect another big season from Carson here. Even if his workload reduces, he'll remain one of the most electrifying backs in 2019. Number nine, Melvin Gordon. After a frustrating rookie year, Gordon has seen consistent and steady production over the last three years. He's the best running back Phillip Rivers and the Los Angeles Chargers have had since LaDainian Thomas. Gordon has only fumbled once over the last two seasons, and he averaged a career best 5.1 yards per carry in 2018. And he's recorded over 400 receiving yards in each of the last three years. The Chargers know what they're getting in Gordon, so we can stop rambling. On. Number eight, Joe Mixon. The six foot one, 220 pound running back was one of the few positives for a frustrating Cincinnati Bengals team in 2018. After a not so great rookie year, Mixon broke out with 1,168 rushing yards, which placed him fourth in the NFL. The Bengals passing game has taken a step back as Andy Dalton continues to regress. We expect Joe Mixon to build off his superb sophomore year and finish among the league leaders once again. He's a must have for your fantasy team. Number seven, Le'Veon Bell. Bell was arguably the NFL's best running back during his time with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he sat out all of 2018 before inking a four year deal worth 52.5 million with the New York Jets. He deserves top 10 placing because of his impressive track record, but we do have two main questions here. How will he perform after missing a whole year? And can he repeat his success with the Jets? New head coach Adam Gay should be able to maximize Bell's talents, but the Jets O-line is nowhere close to what the Steelers had. Le'Veon Bell is too good to be a total flop in a Jets uniform. He'll be a great playmaker for second year quarterback Sam Darnold. Number six, Derrick Henry. The Tennessee Titans power back ranked seventh in rushing last season with 1,059 yards. Only Ty Gurley and Alvin Kamara had more rushing touchdowns than Henry, who recorded 12. 
And it's worth noting that Henry has less carries than the six men who finished ahead of him in rushing. He averaged an impressive 4.9 yards per carry, more than the likes of Ezekiel Elliott and Kamara. Henry is the true MVP of the Tennessee offense. And after a breakout 2018 season, we can't wait to see what he does in year four. Number five, Ty Gurley. Now it was hard to place Gurley fifth here, he is the three-time Pro Bowler who won the 2017 Offensive Player of the Year award, and he's led the league in rushing touchdowns over each of the last two seasons. But the thing is, he was hampered by knee injuries late in the season, plus the playoffs, and the Rams have also made it clear that they'll be cutting back on his workload. He won't be a cowbell running back anymore, according to NFL Network's Ian Rappaport. This is obviously the best for Gurley's long-term future, and the best move for the Rams, but Gurley's production is going to drop quite a bit, which means other running backs will vie for the best in the league crown. Number four, Christian McCaffrey. Simply amazing. This guy was doing so much work in the passing game as a running back, and yet he finished sixth in rushing with 1,098 yards. He quickly helped us forget about his lackluster rookie year, and he finished third in all-purpose yards last season, only behind Ezekiel Elliott and Saquon Barkley. McCaffrey has a chance to join the 1,000-1,000 club. A thousand rushing yards is a gimme if he's healthy. Can he get those 1,000 receiving yards as well? He's primed for another big year as the Carolina Panthers try to bounce back from a frustrating 2018 campaign. Number three, Alvin Kamara. There's nothing to dislike about this man's game so far. The only reason he hasn't rushed for a thousand yards yet is because Kamara is too busy doing damage as a receiver as well. 162 receptions for 1,535 yards and nine receiving touchdowns through two NFL seasons? Sign us up. Kamara had a whopping 14 rushing touchdowns in 2018 too. You might make a case that he's the best player on the New Orleans Saints roster, even over quarterback Drew Brees. Consider Kamara a dark horse MVP candidate for 2018. Number two, Ezekiel Elliott. The Dallas Cowboys superstar led the NFL in rushing for the second time in his young career last season, recording 1,434 yards on the ground. If he played all 16 games last year, we might be talking about a guy who's led the NFL in rushing three straight years. It'll be business as usual for Elliott playing behind the Cowboys offensive line. Having Amari Cooper for a full season will help as well, since defenses can't stack the box on Elliott like they did for the first half of 2018. Elliott could have his greatest season yet in 2019. Number one, Saquon Barkley. He played on a terrible New York Giants team with one of the worst offensive lines in the league. And yet Barkley led the NFL in all purpose yards in his rookie year. Is, is that good? He had 1,307 yards, 11 rushing touchdowns, and 91 receptions for 721 yards and four touchdowns. And guess what? The guy is only gonna get better. I mean, with Odell Beckham Jr. getting traded to Cleveland, you know the Giants will build this offense around Barkley. How fun will the NFC East be as Elliott and Barkley fight for the rushing title? We haven't seen the best of Barkley yet, folks. And the man only had one of the greatest rookie seasons ever. Heads up all the way, Giants fans. This guy will make 2019 somewhat worth watching. We promise. Who are your top five running backs entering the 2019 NFL season? Join us in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps us out a ton and we truly appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around in TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.